So a few weeks ago, I asked you not to vote for Diet Trump. And, of course, you ignored me. Doug Ford's progressive conservatives took office with a sweeping majority, and now we get to live with the consequences. In the past 18 months, we've seen Donald Trump attack minorities, undermine the foundations of democracy, and support white supremacy. Now, you would think that after having a front-row seat to the gong show that is this presidency, Ontarians would be hesitant to elect Trump's younger, dumber, uglier half-brother. But no. Maybe you think the comparison between Trump and Ford is a bit unfair. Well, let's just look at the facts. Donald Trump makes sexist comments. So does Doug Ford. Donald Trump supports white supremacist candidates. So does Doug Ford. Donald Trump has tried to suppress an investigation into electoral fraud. And... Yeah. You see, if these two men were a piece of software, then Ford would be the stripped-down student version that comes without a spell check and won't run on a Mac. Same code, fewer bells and whistles. And we elected him with a sizable majority government, which is the Canadian equivalent of giving the Republicans control of all three branches of government. Good things grow in Ontario. Ontario. Proudly growing peaches. And fascism. Don't you want to take your next vacation here? One of the first things on Ford's conservative chopping block is the sex ed curriculum instituted by Kathleen Wynne's liberals in 2015. The sex ed component is part of a larger curriculum of health and well-being topics taught in phys ed courses throughout Ontario. It's mainly an update to a previous model that was developed in the 90s with greater emphasis on same-sex relationships, gender identity, and consent. It's really nothing to be afraid of. Of course, that hasn't stopped conservatives from flipping out about it. One of the things that I've heard from many, many parents, I've been speaking to them as well, is to the age appropriateness of certain measures. So maybe something that children are learning in grade two now, they should learn in grade eight or nine or 10. All right, let's take a look. I'm using an article from Global News so that you'll be able to look for yourself and verify what I'm saying. I actually have copies of the sex ed curriculum that I downloaded from the Ontario government's website, and I can show you screenshots from those, but I'm not sure how long that curriculum will remain on the Ontario government's website now that it's been scrapped. In grade two, students will learn the body changes that accompany physical development. Seems innocent enough. Here's a more detailed screenshot I managed to snag from the Ontario government's website before they took it down. Students will learn the basic stages of human development, infant, child, adolescent, and the physical changes associated with them, like the loss of baby teeth. Let's play that clip from the debate again, shall we? So maybe something that children are learning in grade two now, they should learn in grade eight or nine or 10. Yeah, I really want ninth graders learning about losing their baby teeth. Children in grade two will also learn the importance of good hygiene, like brushing and flossing. Oh my God, the horror. But the other whole area that the curriculum doesn't cover is things like cyberbullying and sexting and all of those things related to technology. I wanna make sure that our children are gonna be protected and that they have the knowledge and information they need. Nope, it's right there. The dangers of sexting. Just about every grade level includes a component on bullying, and yes, those include lessons on cyberbullying. In fact, here's sex educator Nadine Thornhill talking about how she wants to continue to teach the updated sex ed curriculum through YouTube seminars specifically to cover topics like sexting and cyberbullying. Things like sexting, things like cyberbullying, these are not things that we had to deal with in 1998. So it's critical to teach our kids how to communicate in respectful ways with one another. Did Christine Elliott not even bother to do five minutes worth of reading before she walked into that debate? Or is she just lying through her teeth? And maybe you're thinking, well, she's just one candidate among many and she didn't even win. Maybe the others have more reasonable positions. So here's Caroline Mulrooney. 
Uh, I believe, as, uh, as the other candidates do, that parents were not adequately consulted on, on this curriculum. And, and that's the problem, and that's the way it's been for 15 years under the Liberal government. Uh, they don't consult parents, they don't consult small business owners, they don't consult, uh, they don't consult stakeholders the way they should. And in this case, the curriculum was developed mostly with bureaucrats and not enough with parents. But going forward, I will ensure, uh, I commit to, to consulting parents on all things that affect families and children. But I am not going to reopen the curriculum. It seems she doesn't object to the actual content of the sex ed curriculum. Her complaint is that parents weren't adequately consulted. Honestly, the best response to this I've heard comes from Rob Silver. There literally has never been an item in the Ontario curriculum that has been consulted on more than sex education. There has never been this level of consultation, number one. Number two, the Conservative government has not consulted for a single day on the reintroduction of the 1990s sex ed curriculum. I know Denise and other Conservatives are going to say, well, we had an election. That's the consultation. That gives us a mandate to introduce the 1990s consultation. It's funny that that wasn't mandated enough for Kathleen Wynne to introduce her sex education. Her sex education, even thousands and thousands of parents being consulted, that wasn't good enough. But Doug Ford winning an election, we can do whatever we can want. But wait, Rich, none of these people actually won the leadership of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party. Why don't you get a quote from Doug Ford himself? Well, because Dougie is notoriously vague in every statement that he makes. People, what I'm hearing across the province, that people are sick and tired of the liberal ideology that's being shoved down their throats. And that's from everywhere, right across the, the board. They did not consult with the parents. They did not consult with the teachers. I believe in educating your kids at home first when it comes to this. Do you think the sex they're, ed they're curriculum needs updating? Well, I think we need to review it and change it. 100% it needs to be changed. What would you take Steve, out? Steve, I'm, I'm not going to get into the details, but I can tell you one thing. We have the greatest teachers in the entire world right here in the province. I'm not going to get into the specifics. Okay. This is the only candidate to not release a fully costed budget prior to the election, and somehow he still got elected by the so-called fiscal conservatives. Yeah. Doug Ford's strategy is to avoid saying anything concrete, that way you can't hold him to it later. But let's really dig into it since we need to come up with some justification for why Ford decided to revert this province to a sex ed curriculum that was developed over 20 years ago. Here's the text from the throne speech. A government for the people will also include respecting parents by replacing the current sex education curriculum with a new age-appropriate one that is based on real consultations with parents. So, not much explanation there. And here's a statement made by Lisa Thompson, the current education minister. The sex ed curriculum is going to be reverted back to the manner in which it was prior to the changes that were introduced by the Liberal government. We're going to be moving very swiftly in our consultations and I will be sharing with you our process in the weeks to come. Of course, she also backpedaled during a parliamentary question period. I would like to share with you today that contrary to what was reported last week, we are going to stand firmly in support of students and the realities they face in 2018. We know they need to learn about consent. We know they need to learn about cyber safety. We know they need to learn about gender identity and appreciation. So the province has repealed the updated curriculum and yet teachers will still be expected to teach all the new material that was introduced in the updated curriculum. I am very confused. I didn't watch the PC leadership debate. Frankly, I didn't care which one of these yahoos took control of a party that I wouldn't vote for if my life depended on it. When I began writing the script for this video, I understood the basic bullet points of this issue. I understood the updates to the sex ed curriculum, why those updates were necessary, and why repealing them was a bad idea. But I had no idea what conservatives were saying to justify this boneheaded move. And do you want to know what I've decided after all that reading? My honest takeaway is that our province is currently in the hands of people who do no research, who make knee-jerk decisions about major policy issues, and who can't make up their minds about what they want anyway. Oh, God.
good. My slow clap processor made it into this thing. So we have that. Seriously, what do these people even want? Can someone please tell me? Because I'm starting to get the impression that Doug Ford's conservatives want sex ed to look like this. Fluffy and Fuzzy went to the park, the ice cream social, the boat show, and various other wholesome activities. And they never ruined their fun by giving in to their throbbing biological urges. Then came the big day. Fluffy and Fuzzy got married. That night came the honeymoon. She's faking it. The most satisfying part of the night was knowing that they waited. Nine months later, Fluffy gave birth to 14 beautiful bunnies. Eight survive. And now that you know how it's done, don't do it. After three days, a dozen articles, and I'd say at least two hours of video footage, it's still hard to pin down exactly what the conservatives hope to accomplish by repealing the 2015 sex ed curriculum. The only one who said anything specific was Christine Elliott, and everything she said could be debunked with two minutes of research. So why are the conservatives doing this? What is the goal of repealing the 2015 sex ed curriculum? Well, I honestly think the best way to answer that question would be to revisit that clip from Doug Ford. People, what I'm hearing across the province, that people are sick and tired of the liberal ideology that's being shoved down their throats. I believe in educating your kids at home first. Educate your kids at home first, please. Look, I love my parents, but there's no denying the fact that they were always uncomfortable with this topic. Would you like to know what they taught me about sex? Nothing. Literally nothing. I learned sex ed from my best friend, who learned it from the playground, movies, and his feminist mother. In fact, no joke, one day when we were 13, my friend went home, slammed the door, looked at his mother and said, it's not my job to teach Rich about sex. Conservatives can talk a big game about letting parents teach their kids the facts of life on their own terms, but the kind of parents who don't want their kids to learn about sex in school are often the kind of parents who would prefer it if their kids just didn't learn about sex at all. Which means they'll either avoid the topic entirely or do such a piss poor job of explaining it that the kid walks away feeling even more confused. I suppose I should be fair. I also had the benefit of a Catholic school education which meant learning about the birds and the bees from a delightful Catholic woman who did not know the meaning of the word clitoris. I mean, seriously? God, I thought I had a bad life. And then in high school, I transferred to the public system, where I learned sex ed from the ultimate gym teacher, a man who looks like Bruce Willis and sounds like Sylvester Stallone. I will now recite for you the entirety of the sex ed curriculum as he delivered it in April of 1997. As part of your government mandated phys ed curriculum, I am now required to teach you something about human health and reproduction. Uh, let's see here. Smoking's bad for you. Don't touch a Johnson. The problem with teaching sex ed with this level of fumbling discomfort is that it can impart to students the idea that sex is dirty and embarrassing. And yes, that can have lasting consequences into adulthood. That's not just my opinion. A study conducted by Pamela Kohler of the University of Washington compared the rates of teen pregnancy among students who received comprehensive sex ed to those of students who received no sex ed or abstinence-only programs. It concluded that students who received comprehensive sex ed were significantly less likely to report an unwanted pregnancy. These findings were later corroborated by Dr. Catherine Stranger-Hall of the University of Georgia. Kids need to learn these things, and parents often aren't up to the task. But I want to focus on one particular slip that Doug Ford made during the leadership debate. That people are sick and tired of the liberal ideology that's being shoved down their throats. Ah, so now we come to it. This is what it's really about. The liberal ideology that went into Kathleen Wynne's comprehensive sex ed curriculum. So what exactly does he mean by that? Well, judging by the signs we see at the protests outside Queen's Park, I think it's pretty clear. Ford and his cronies oppose the revised sex ed curriculum because it teaches children that queer people are perfectly normal, that their experiences are valid, 
the new curriculum indicates to children who might be questioning their own sexuality or gender identity that their feelings are real, natural, and deserving of respect. Conservatives can't have that. Now we could find good science to debunk every single one of their bullshit claims about same-sex relationships or gender identity, but frankly that would become rather cumbersome. So let's just pick one, and then I'll link you to a few great channels that explore these issues from a queer perspective. Let's look at this sign. Would it surprise you to learn that I actually went and read the relevant section of the 2015 Nelson Essentials of Pediatrics and it does not say that 80% of trans kids grow out of it? I know, you're shocked, right? The line most likely to be responsible for that misquoted statistic is this. Long-term follow-up studies of children with gender identity disorder suggest that only 2-20% to have gender identity disorder as adults. Here's what you need to understand. Being diagnosed with gender identity disorder is not the same as being transgender. For a very long time, pediatricians and child psychologists failed to make that important distinction. There's a world of difference between a cis boy who likes to play with Barbie dolls and an actual trans girl. And yet before the implementation of the DSM-5, both of these children might have been diagnosed with GID. Which means the 80% of kids who grow out of their GID were never trans to begin with. In fact, a team of Canadian researchers published a critical analysis that examined the methodological failures of the studies that gave us the so-called 80% figure. And I quote, Due to such shifting diagnostic categories and inclusion criteria over time, these studies included children who, by current DSM-5 standards, would not likely have been categorized as transgender. And therefore, it is not surprising that they would not identify as transgender at follow-up. Ford and his bozos would know this if they bothered to do five goddamn minutes of research. Wait, what does that say? The Janeway Pediatric Research Unit? Ah, Captain J. Finally getting the recognition you deserve. Historically, transgender individuals have suffered higher rates of mental illness. However, rates of depression and anxiety in transgender children drop to levels that are comparable to those of the general population when those children are supported in their gender identities. A sex ed curriculum that tells queer children their feelings are natural and valid would go a long way towards lowering the painfully high rates of suicide among transgender kids. But of course, Ford and his conservatives can't have that. In fact, I would argue that's what this is really about. Shoving queer people back into the closet. Denying them the social support networks that have allowed them to live better, happier lives. The liberal ideology that Kathleen Wynne tried to implement was nothing more than an attempt to alleviate the social stigma that has haunted queer people for centuries. Doug Ford, his party, and the social conservatives who support them want to make sure that social stigma remains intact. And it's not hard to understand why. Conservative philosophy is pretty straightforward. There is an in-group and an out-group, and the out-group must be made to suffer. It's the only way to draw a distinction between those two groups. In the end, it will be young people who are denied access to vital information who suffer the most from the decision to repeal this curriculum. I can only hope that in four years' time, Ontarians will be sick to death of Doug Ford. And maybe we'll give somebody else a try. Hey, this is Rich, reminding you to like, subscribe, and click the bell. And if you enjoy these videos, then might I suggest you check out my series of science fiction adventure novels, The Justice Keepers Saga. I guarantee you they're made with the same level of care and dedication. That's all for today. Thanks for stopping by.